Okay, you've asked for months and months. Comments kept flying. And after having rewatched all the pertinent episodes of Digimon Adventure Zero Two, on today's video, I am finally giving all the international Digidestined full Digivolution lines. <laughs> What is up digital companions, my name is Khan EX and welcome back to the most research I've had to do for a video all year. Yeah, I pretty much rewatched all of Zero Two to make sure I didn't miss anything for this. The International Digi Destin did kind of a thing across the whole adventure franchise. Our first notable one is Willis in Hurricane Touchdown, then we got Michael in episode 14 of Digimon Adventure Zero Two. But then within Japan, we also have like Ryo, who is a Digi Destin who existed before and after adventure. For the purposes of this video, I'm mainly focusing on the International Digi Destin and we saw in World Tour. For example, in Last Evolution Kizuna, there are just like hundreds of people in the background that we've never met before, don't know who they are. I am not James A. Janice, and this is not the DigiCount, so we're not gonna be doing all of the Kizuna random Digidestined in the background. However, I'm not just doing Zero Two either. I'm gonna do some adjacent stuff. Let's get to it. So we begin in Japan, and the first one I'm going to tackle is Oikawa. Yes, he finally, just before he died, got his partner Deterimon. As an aside, I'm going to be focusing on Rookie through to Mega, unless we saw someone only partnered with a baby or in training, and I'll kind of bridge the gaps as far as possible. So Oikawa's Deterimon, we never saw Digivolve. I've actually never Digivolved in the entire franchise. But an evolution for Deterimon that I've always really liked is Chapmon. This has never happened in Digimon history from what I can see, but look at them, they work perfectly together, and actually work a little bit better than common pre-evolutions for Chapmon, which to me means that a really good rookie would be Pomumon. I know, Pomumon came out very recently, but it makes no sense to me to time limit these evolutions. If we were gonna see these partners Digivolve, we sure as hell didn't in Zero Two, we basically didn't in Kizuna, so this would be happening in a modern movie, therefore all modern Digimon are on the table. I do think Kamemon would be a fun pick too. Giving an older Digidestined a Kamemon partner is something we've seen before in the franchise, but I think Deterimon and Chapmon as a little evolution line have vegetation in common, so I am picking Pomumon. Deterimon is incredibly cute, so I think keeping up some cuteness with his rookie would make sense. Then to follow that line more of plant dinosaurs, as Oikawa himself was a bit of a dinosaur, we'll have Parasaurmon and Teropiamon before ending on, I think, Hydromon and Bloom Lordmon. I don't tend to do many branching evos in these videos, because the anime of this era rarely did, but also for time. However, Hydromon looking so evil and creepy, and Bloom Lordmon being a knightly defender just really powerful parallels Oikawa's own journey. The dark spore evil side of him represented in Hydromon and his heroic sacrifice at the end when he met Deterimon being the Bloom Lord Mon half, coming full circle. Speaking of the dark spore, these dark spore children can jump in a hole. Just kidding. <laughs> Their partners are so late game and are baby forms that it's almost impossible to do anything really fun or thematic with, because we don't really know much about their characters either. However, I do want to give them some potentially fun run-ups to Rookie, which is where we're going to stop. Noriko Kawada got a Punimon, which to me would become Sunimon and then Psychmon. I think it is no coincidence that these babies that we see at the end of Zero Two are all babies that are also used for the original eight Digimon Adventure partners. There were definitely more babies than this at the time that this episode came out, so it feels very deliberate or maybe just easier. But anyway, I thought as those Digimon's partners have spent time with the Dark Spores, that might kind of influence their Digivolution path slightly, which is why Noriko gets Psychmon. And I'm just going to do the rookies for these kids because I think those are the ones that are actually most important. You can kind of use your imagination from the rookie towards any evolution that is possible in the entire world. Though in this instance, for example, the Psychmon could become Gururumon, Astamon, and Balfamon Rage Mode or something. Takashi Yoshizawa is partnered with a Hoyomon who would go to Pagumon and then Sukaimon, this being a variant for Patamon and TK, just like Psychmon is a variant for Gabumon and Matt. Hiroshi Shibata got a Nyokmon, which I think would go to Tanamon and then Auroramon, the Palmon variant. And then, yeah, you can see what I'm doing here. I think this may legitimately have been the intention of Digimon Adventure Zero Two's creative team, as a lot of these variant rookies did exist at the time of the pre production and production of Zero Two because of things like Digimon World. The major outliers are Keiko Karata, who got a Yukimi Bottomon. This may have been a reference to Gatomon, intended to digivolve into Nyaromon, Salomon, and then maybe. Black Gatomon or something, but personally it feels a little bit uninspired and obviously takes one more stage to diverge, so instead I've gone with a more modern pick, Hiyadimon and then the Blucomon line. Could have gone Snowagumon too, but we're gonna use Snowagumon a little bit later, and Blucomon's my boy, gotta rep my boys! Then we saw a Pabumon, which would become a Motimon and then maybe Fanbeemon? Shut up! Let me help this one, okay? And then the Botamon would become Koromon and then maybe Black Agumon? It would be kind of fun to have Black Agumon become Virus Greymon, Metal 
Battle Greymon and then Black Wall Greymon. Maybe the Black Wall Greymon data somehow found its way back to get a human partner. Well, that's the Japanese Digidestined, but how would you like to be a Japanese Digidestined? Well, I don't know if I can do that for you, but I can get you some amazing Digimon goods with today's sponsor, Baiyi. Give me a break. Baiyi is, of course, the fantastic proxy service getting you access to goods from Japan. With Yahoo Japan auctions and shopping, Makari, Rakuten, Amazon JP, and much more. If you're looking for some modern Digimon goods like the Vital Bracelet BE, you could get an absolute bargain on Baiyi right now because the yen is so weak to the dollar, meaning that any purchase you make in Japanese yen is going to save you a lot of money if you're shopping in USD. And we're going to make that all the sweeter because when you sign up for for Baiyi with my link in the description. They will give you a 2,000 yen coupon off any purchase you make with them. All you gotta do is sign up with my link, easy peasy. There's also a ton of retro Digimon stuff if you're looking for Digimon Adventure Zero 2 stuff like the armor figures, the old Digivices, the anniversary Digivices. Again, the yen being weak to the dollar right now could really get you a bargain with Baiyi. So thank you to Baiyi for sponsoring this video and let's get some more Digidestined. America! Yeah! It's time for Michael! Who, as I said, we met in the Shurimon episode, episode 14, but also shows up in World Tour in Miami, or Miami. We know he gets a Beatamon, which becomes a Seedramon. I think from there, pretty obvious will become a Mega Seedramon and possibly a Metal Seedramon. Though I do think they might want to avoid any allusions to the Dark Masters with Digimon partners. So maybe Michael could get Giga Seedramon. It's an ex antibody natural carrier, but works fine as a Mega. Or something I think would be really interesting would be to give him an Aegisdramon, which is a Digimon made of Lysiomon and Seedramon data. And Michael's dad is a pilot pilot and Hollywood movie star, so a big flying deep savers Digimon to cap off his line, be something a little bit different, I think is very thematic. Then we go over to New York. I'm so sorry. We have Taysom and Airdramon. It's normally quite common to see Beatamon, Agumon, or even Monodramon become Airdramon, but one that weirdly has never happened as far as I can tell is Dracomon. Dracomon normally being the Cordramon blue and green rookie, but I think there's definitely room for it to become the Terrandramon rookie, you know? With Cordramon slash Groundramon already existing, but then Airdramon and Seedramon. From there, I don't have a ton of like character or thematic stuff for Tatum. He's got a very small appearance. It might be fun to give him a virus metal Greymon, though I do think something like Wingdramon and Slayerdramon could be fun. Maria turns up with a Centaurmon. I'm gonna make her rookie Violet Alekmon. It's a bit different to a pick like Sukaimon that we already had, or Alekmon, which I'm gonna use in a little bit for someone else, but still feels pretty good for Centaurmon. Another common Centaurmon rookie is Tapirmon. I don't think there's anything wrong with using Tapirmon here, but I'm trying to use as few existing partner Digimon as possible. And of course, Maki in Try had a tape him on. His Centaurmon could then digivolve to Assaultmon because, well, sorry, America. Or maybe Indaramon and then Kentaurusmon for the Mega. Or Ancient Troyamon, you know, get some real horse vibes going on. Yeah, there's not a ton American about this line unless we just throw in a bunch more D Brigade and guns, but I don't think that's really faithful to Centaurmon. So yeah, let's say Indaramon and Kentaurusmon. Then we've got Lou and Tortamon, and I've yet to use it for this video, and it hasn't been an anime partner because it's such a new Digimon, so I'm gonna give him Sunarizamon. Digivolve evolving into his Tortamon and then maybe Jagamon because well it kind of looks like Tortamon and it's a perfect level or ultimate and given Jagamon's special move is smash potatoes maybe they're uh, Idaho potatoes shut up don't boo me you asked for this now you're reaping the whirlwind and then maybe we could end on something dramatic like Eldoradimon to cap off the line a giant city of gold on the back of a turtle probably has swathes of farmland on top of it to tie into that potato connection and Eldorado was purported to be in the Americas. Not North America, but America nonetheless. Then we got Steve and Frigimon. I'm going to give him a Snow Agumon. It's one more Agumon related Digimon for America. Then his Frigimon will Digivolve to Panjimon. Yes, it is an ultimate or perfect level, believe it or not. An Ice Leomon, and we love to see those. And there's something about lions and bravery in America that, whatever. I couldn't find a good eagle, okay? And then finally, Ancient Mega Thuriamon. Did consider Frost Velgamon because, you know, birds, eagles, but no. The Mega Thuriam was a type of extinct giant sloth. The full name being the Mega Thuriam. Thurium Americanum, which literally means Great Beast from America, native to tropical South America, Central America, and North America. Then we got Phil, the guy that looks like Ash, and I'm gonna be totally honest here, I've seen a bunch of Digimon fans who thought he was a direct reference to Ash. I don't know whether he's supposed to be, I've never seen any interviews saying, oh, this is like a little inside nod to Pokemon, or maybe Red, you know, the protagonist of Pokemon stuff anyway. So I'm gonna give him stuff that I think is appropriate.
appropriate, but I'm also going to give him some Pokemon references. So he's partnered with a Flare Rizamon as a champion, which I'm seeing as a kind of Charmeleon Charizard reference. I think maybe that's why people associate Phil with Ash or Red more, because he's partnered with a very Charizardy type of Digimon. So yeah, I'm going to have it evolve from a Lekmon, very much our OG Digimon, the most similar to Pikachu, other than Agumon being yellow, with its long ears and electric powers. From Flare Rizamon, it gets a little bit more difficult to keep our little Pokemon joke going, and I'm not that attached to it anyway in the first place, so I've settled on Mega Dramon. Another classic V-Pet Digimon, but you know, it could also be seen to combine elements of like Charizard with Ash's Noibat, Gliscor, and even Gibble. Again, these Ash references are purely for fun on my part. I don't consider them like canon or intended by Digimon. It's just something fun to do for an evolution line that we're just completely making up. And for Mega Dramon, Mega, Megidramon and Machine Dramon, two very common Evos of Mega Dramon would work fine, but maybe a little bit too evil. Again, I want to avoid the Dark Masters from these evolution lines. What about Brigade Ramon? I mean, I know it's literally brand, brand new, debuting this year, but it would kind of work, be a fun alternate War Greymon to give to another Digidestined partnered with a lizard in the Adventure Canon. And well, the Militaristic D Brigade isn't exactly unrepresentative of America, you know? Listen, it's Brigade Ramon or Gundramon, pick your poison. We're not out of the States yet because we still have Willis and Menua. Willis's Cocomon got the Dark Digivolution route in Hurricane Touchdown, mostly. Lotmon to Wendemon to Antilamon to Cherubimon Vice. So I picture a world where maybe the data was saved. We do see Willis with both partners in Kizuna, so I guess it's possible. Maybe his Lotmon on the Light Rue would go to like Teruimon, maybe Antilamon Deva, and Cherubimon Virtue. As for his Terriamon, we know it became Gargomon and Golden Armor Digivolt to Rapidmon Gold. So I think it would make sense that his ultimate is also Rapidmon, I suppose. So for its Mega, I'm gonna give it Fujinmon to deviate a little bit from Henry's Terriamon partner, but also because I want to, and it's my video. Listen, I didn't put Hyokomon in this video, count your blessings. And our last American Digi Destined is Menua Bellucci. She got a Morphomon, and unfortunately, really no perfect butterfly line currently exists that doesn't use Aosmon. Aosmon, we must remember, is not the de facto evolution for Morphomon, but a data reconstruction of Morphomon. It's basically an entire line of dark or artificial digivolution for Aosmon, similar to how Karata created Gizmon. Though a line I do kind of like is on the Forest Guardians being memory. Morphomon becoming Hoodiemon, basically our only other major butterfly Digimon, then to Aosmon Ultimate, and finally Ban. Cho Lilymon, which you know I'm reasonably happy with. You could sub in Lilamon if you wanted instead of Aosmon Ultimate. But yes, Digimon, we need way more butterfly Digimon. Thanks. All right, we can finally leave America and go to China with the Boy Brothers, who each have three Siakomon, which become Octomon. As such, I don't think the Digivolution lines would diverge. They are very clearly meant to be a trio of brothers, all with the same Digimon. So I'm going to give them Animalicarimon and Plesiomon. It'll be nice to give some Adventure Digidestined Plesiomon after Joe's Plesiomon kind of got erased by Tri, replaced with Vikemon, and keeps up a pretty general aquatic-themed evolution for them. Maybe even a seafood theme? Kinda? It is Yu Hong, who is partnered with an Apemon. I think given that she's a Chinese Digidestined and is seen riding an Airdramon, kind of similar to riding the Nimbus with her Apemon, this could be a kind of nod by Digimon to the Journey to the West, which is why I think that her Apemon should digital from Monmon to Gokumon, and then finally Gankumon or Shakamon. Could be super valid, nice little Journey to the West reference, nothing too crazy. Uh, we also got the Vietnamese Digidestined at this point, Dien, who was partnered with a Gorillamon. I think his rookie could also be a Monmon. We're incredibly limited for monkey rookie Digimon too. Then becoming Makuramon, a Deva Digimon, and the concept of Dave do extend in reinterpretations across Asia, including in Vietnam, so that would be fine. And then finally, uh, King Etamon, why not? We definitely need more monkey Digimon too, Bandai Namco, or more stuff to tie in visually for these Digivolution lines. I am also trying to go with cultural references or things that would make sense for their geographical location location without going too stereotypy and lame, you know? I'm trying to hit that balance if I can, but of course I'm far from perfect. Moving over to India, we have Mina and Meramon. It's rookie very well could be Candlemon or any other common Meramon Prevo. Though I think Flamemon would work too. Flamemon being the child version of the human spirit of fire. Agnimon getting its name from Agni, the Hindu and Vedic god of fire. So while it's not Agnimon himself, Flamemon would act as somewhat of a reference. Then I think her Meramon could digivolve to Asuramon. In Hindu mythology, the Asura are a group of power-seeking deities, sometimes referred to as demons. Works great visually from Meramon, and Asuramon itself is a very big Hindu reference. 
then for the mega, I mean, you could go Shiva Mon if you wanted. Of course, Shiva is from Hinduism. It has multiple arms. I guess it works, but I think for a better visual connection, I'm actually going to go with Volcanus Mon. It has many arms, and while it is the Greek or Roman inspired Digimon, it definitely still works. There is a Hindu god called Vishvakarma, who is a craftsman deity and the divine architect of the Devas in contemporary Hinduism, often depicted with four arms, making him a very similar god to common depictions and tales of Vulcan, the Roman god that inspired Volcanus Mon. This shoot has been so long that my camera just ran out of battery. Okay, here we go. Now it's time to move over to Australia, where we meet Derek or Dingo, who is partnered with a Crab Mon that becomes a Sealamon, which could then become Divermon. Diving is popular in Australia with the Great Barrier Reef, though we do see another Digidestin with a Divermon. Now, given a lot of international Digidestin double up, this isn't the end of the world, but another ultimate we could pick is Divemon. Divemon is a Pulsemon Evo, so again, very recent. So it does work quite nicely, I think, for the theme, being a swimming shark man. Though its tattoos do appear to be more reminiscent of Maori or Samoan tattoos, that Polynesian or Oceana link still works, in my opinion. And then that means that we get to give the windsurfing Derek a Surfimon. It just makes too much sense. The unnamed Digidestin's Divemon, I think, could become kind of anything, but Plesiomon would be fun. Australia's first complete Plesiosaur fossil was discovered in the outback of Queensland, so we know Plesiosaurs existed in Australia. And yeah, we did give a Plesiomon to the Boy Brothers, but we can double up, it's fine. Or maybe give it Neptune Mon, I don't see why not. That Divemon could then become Dolphmon, dolphins live in Australian waters, and maybe the rookie could be Crabmon like Derek, or maybe even Penguin Mon, as penguins do exist naturally in Australia, crazy enough, with Phillip Island being home to Australia's largest colony of little penguins. Ah, there's this Bukamon. Man, speaking of Joe and Gomamon, how on earth do we go about not just giving this unnamed Digidestin to Gomamon? There's not even a Gomamon variant. Well, we did give Gomamon a variant in a video of mine, hard on screen right now. So how about Otamamon, which could go to Gakomon, Shogun Gakomon, and damn, we need to give Shogun Gakomon the Shin Monzemon treatment, huh? Well, if we're not limiting ourselves to time periods, I could see Amphimon being an unusual but fitting Shogun Gakomon Mega, but I quite like Jumbo Gamemon too. The two Gizamon could function similarly to the Blue Brothers and their same Shakomon and Octomon. Maybe we could diverge a bit, giving one Shellmon and the other Cyclomon. Cyclomon referencing more the outback of Australia and areas like that, with an evolution line leading to Gogmamon and Blastmon, as a reference to Uluru, the large sandstone formation in the outback, and diamond mines like the Argyle Mine. Jumping back to that Shellmon, it would be really funny to have it become Mermaimon. Yes, solely so I can do the old tired Arnar Cleon! <laughs> and then uh, Marine Angemon. Yeah, I haven't used it yet, and marine conservation is super important to Australia, though you may not actually see any sea angels in Australian waters. Now it's time for France. Catherine Deneuve, fairly simple. She has a Floramon, which becomes a Kiwimon. Feel it's pretty clear that they're going for that nice OG Floramon Kiwimon line, so Blossomon comes next. And honestly, I'd be happy to end on Lotusmon here, making Catherine complimentary to Mimi. Though I do also see great validity in something like Cerismon or Cerismon Medium, coming from her Kiwimon, and definitely not a reference to any video game. Or even Bloom Lordmon for Catherine too. It would fit in really well in the Palace of Versailles and that whole French nobility feel. But I think I am going to settle on Lotusmon as a Mimi parallel. Then we got the unnamed French Digidestined. The Elecmon would become Leomon, Grap Leomon, and Sable Leomon. The first Gazimon could become maybe Gururumon, Astamon, and Grand Drachmon, something a bit different. The second Gazimon could become Gururumon Black, Where Gururumon Black, and Marsmon. Really, you could just kind of plug in the gaps of any evolutions here. The first Gotsumon could become Icemon, Insekimon, and then Bancho Golemon. And the second could become Golemon, and then I guess we'll double up on picks again and have Gogmamon as the ultimate and Blastmon as the mega. The Vegemon, I think, could digivolve from Mushmon, becoming Pumpkinmon and Noble Pumpkinmon. And Noble Pumpkinmon again would fit in with that French Palace of Versailles feel. The two Vilemon, I think, could come from Fascomon, then go to Felismon and Myrmicusmon and Mephismon and Golfmon, respectively. Time for Mexico! And Rosa and Gotsumon, which we saw become a Monochromon. This does lead me to believe that we're going more a dinosaur feel with her evolution line. So I think Triceramon and Canandramon could work. There's not a lot of cultural basis for this, though there are a ton of famous fossils discovered in Mexico, so the dinosaur theme isn't inappropriate, it's just also appropriate to a ton of countries, but I digress. The basis for this line that I've chosen is that I think it's a very solid monochromon line that avoids Digimon we've already used, like Megadramon, or Digimon we haven't used, like Chimeramon, that just feels super unlikely. It also skips Vermilimon, which is a very common ultimate level evolution of monochromon, but is a little visually boring. But Canandramon has Digivolve from Triceramon and Vermilimon before, so it makes me feel better about the pick. There are also three other Digidestined with no partners that we see in Mexico. At that point, literally give them whatever you want in your entire head, just come up with whatever works for you. Moving over to Russia, Anna has a Unimon. As earlier with Sensormon, 
Unimon, Tapirmon is a very common Unimon Prevo. So we're going to double up on Penguinmon. It's been a Unimon Prevo before, and I think it would be fun for the cold weather Russian Digidestined. Though before someone um actually is me, yes, as far as I know, there's no penguin species that actually live in Russia. However, there was an international hockey league team from Moscow in 1993, the year of my birth, called the Russian Penguins that were covered recently in a 2020 movie called Red Penguins. Anyway, Unimon could kind of go anywhere from there, but if we're keeping a cold weather vibe to Anna's partner line, I think Mammon being based on the woolly mammoth and finally Skull Mammon would work. Skull Mammon is said to be an undead Digimon that was a Mammon revived from ancient times, perhaps from a sample of Mammon found in the frozen tundra. Sonya has a Sneemon, which I think would make sense to Digivolve from Dokunemon. Then it could become Jewel Beamon, and while technically this could be Ken Stingmon's ultimate, we've never actually seen it in Adventure Canon, so I'm happy with it. And then yeah, it could end on Bancho Stingmon too, but I think Grand Coagamon or even Tyrant Kabuterimon could work nicely here too. Similarly, Yuri has a Kuwagamon, which I think would Digivolve from Kunemon. I like that they've got Kuwagamon and Sneemon, and their rookies could be Dokunemon and Kunemon. His Kuwagamon would then become Okuamon, and then finally Grand Kuwagamon too. Whatever you think works best. There's also three unnamed Siberian Digidestined who all have Frigimon. Oh good, more Frigimon in a world with very limited ice Digimon. Yay! I'm gonna give them Snow Goblimon. It looks like it could live in a Siberian Russian kind of environment with its attire kind of feeling that way. I don't know, I could be wrong here. Then Frigimon could Digivolve to Frozomon. And finally, I don't know, Frost Velgamon. Let's just get all the cold mother out here. In the Japanese version, the Siberian characters are just said to be from the north. So I've just tried to give them cold weather Digimon or Digimon that would survive well in cold conditions. And that is it. We did it. What this has taught me is that there are still, despite being over 1400 Digimon, huge gaps of thematic and visual connection between Digimon. And I know that is a thing with Digimon for Digivolution to be much more free. It is undeniably the case that visual connection also exists. Agumon, Greymon, Metal Greymon, War Greymon. So while I still want Digivolution to be free always, I would love to see some more Digimon plug these gaps. This video also got me thinking about how we largely saw most of the international Digidestin, specifically in Digimon Adventure 02, and then kind of Kizuna, which made me think, especially the Dark Spore children who got D3 Digivices, what if the international Digidestin could all armor Digivolve too? I know a huge part of the entire World Tour arc is taking down Dark Towers, but it'd be interesting to see if maybe an upgraded Dark Tower Tower stopped them from digivolving and they had to arm a digivolve. That might be a video for the future. Let me know if you want to see it in the comments down below. Thank you to my sovereign ZDK14 and Jmon as well as all my other channel members for supporting this channel with their hard earned money. I'm going to go lie down because this video took forever to put together and shoot and I'll see you next time when we go digital. Bye bye.